James Garfield is a president known for failing to beat the world record for dying the quickest after being inaugurated. Dying only six months into his presidency, Garfield was justifiably unable to get much done. But what he was able to do not only affects our lives today, but also contributed to his own assassination. James was a part of the Republican Party, which at this time was split into two factions, the Stalwarts and the Half-Breeds. The Stalwarts, led by Roscoe Conklin, were generally in favor of the spoil system. In this system, you could be the most qualified person to take on a federal job, but if the people in power didn't like you, nobody cared. Powerful politicians loved the spoil system because it allowed them to put their friends and relatives into lucrative positions and ensure loyalty from everyone they appointed. On the other hand, the half-breeds were generally against this system and believed that it contributed to the many scandals of the Grand Presidency. Believing in civil service reform, many of them wanted to upend the system and add qualifications as a factor of consideration when appointing candidates for federal jobs. These two factions would bicker over which candidate should become president until a compromise led to James Garfield's nomination with Chester Arthur as vice president to appease the stalwarts. Garfield would win the election and anger the stalwarts when he didn't use the spoil system, angering one man in particular. Charles Gateau. Charles was a stalwart Republican who believed he was entitled to a position by Garfield for helping him win the election by reading a speech originally written about Ulysses S. Grant. Replacing every mention of Grant with Garfield, Charles truly believed he had helped Garfield win over New York. Charles would beg to be the American consulship to Paris despite having no qualifications I was rejected so many times the Secretary of State would have to yell at him to never ask about the Paris consulship ever again. Charles was at his lowest point since the divorce back in 74, but with this time came a striking realization. Not only was he not going to get his position, but Garfield's administration was serious about ending the spoils system. So with this, he came to the only natural conclusion anyone in this situation would come to. Murder. Knowing Chester Arthur was tied to the stalwarts, he devised a plan to make Arthur the new president to salvage the spoils system and possibly get to see the non-existent Eiffel Tower. He would buy a British Bulldog revolver specifically because he thought it looked good at a museum and go to the Washington in jail to make sure it'd be a comfy place to stay in after his arrest. He'd stalk Garfield for a while before shooting him twice. Celebrating what he had just done during his arrest, Charles would proceed to achieve the greatest legal recovery of all time. Your Honor, I know this looks bad, but if you really think about it, doctors were the one who killed him. I, I, I was just the guy who shot him. Welp, I see no flaws in your logic. Set this man free. God bless America. Bless the justice system. Come on, guys. Sing it with me. We are the world. Charles was hung nearly a year after the shooting, and afterwards, the National Civil Service Reform League took advantage of the situation, used Garfield's assassination to convince the public of the importance of civil service reform. So whilst trying to ensure the spoil system persisted by killing Garfield, Charles inadvertently led to the creation of the Pendleton Civil Service Reform Act, a law that made it so federal government jobs would be awarded on the basis of merit through competitive exams. This story underlines the corruption present during the Gilded Age, even at the federal level, and the political climate that led an unstable man to murder the president to continue this cycle of corruption. And though Garfield wasn't in office for very long, his death was still a major blow to the American public. His relatable story and overall respectful nature made it so many thought he represented not only who America was, but also what it hoped to become. But though this tragedy led many into mourning, its aftermath led to reform meant to deal with corruption and to end the spoils system in the federal government. 